Can you please confirm if you can see my screen? Uh, yes, I guess yeah, your screen is visible. Yeah. Okay. So welcome to the Meet the Synchronian series episode, latest episode of uh, Meet the Synchronian series and Meet the Synchronian. Next slide, please. So I would like to start with the thanking the ITC team and Desapex team for joining us in this uh, webinar to share their insights about the digital construction journey and how they implemented it within their current uh, project workflow as well. And uh, thereafter, we'll see how the journey progressed and where it all started with the 3D, 2D, and how it prog gradually progressed to 4D and 5D when related aspects. So we are next slide, please. Meet the Synchronian series basically highlights the efforts put in by our construction project management professionals, industry leaders, to implement the digital construction philosophy and the process, and how Synchro was one of the part for their workflows to implement this as a whole practical procedure and workflow to deliver the projects that, right. So next up, we'll see what all, yeah, please change the slides. Virtuosity. Virtuosity is the e-commerce plan of Bentley Systems, which offers a unique bundle of uh, customizable trainings along with the annual subscription of licenses from the uh, variety of Bentley applications. Right? We call this as a Virtuoso subscription, which offers as a bundle of licenses plus the training or expert services uh, mentoring sessions. Yeah, next slide, please. Amy. And for those of you who are new to the 4D BIM or a new to Synchro environment, Synchro is basically for the 4D BIM and planning and scheduling purposes, model-based planning and scheduling purposes. And to do a digital rehearsals of, let's say, equipment planning or particular specific construction related aspect. Along with that, we also have the options for project progress monitoring and proper cost tracking as well be it from the estimate stage to the budgeting or till the actual cost uh, completion stage. So everything entirely for the construction life cycle or a construction project, we have that option with us, right from the desktop application for planners to the particular stakeholders who can join in uh, through the cloud-based platform of Centro Control. And uh, from the side, we have the uh, Centro Field app that manages the uh, RFI-based uh, progress tracking and site updates from the resources and right. Now I would like to introduce the panelist, uh, probably next slide for this. And myself, Pratik Singh, I am at ben Bentley Systems uh, Product Sales Engineer for uh, Centro 4D Business in India. And I would like to ask Anik and Tatagato to join in to inter further introduce themselves. And thereafter, Madhu and uh, Dinesh probably can um, start with the team's introduction and about all the units are and how they will perform the workflows. So yeah, over to Anik. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. This is Anik Mal, and I come from civil engineering background, and I have more than a half a decade experience in helping organizations or users around the world in adopting 4D and 5D solutions through Synchro. Uh, I help them through training, through project guidance, um, by mapping their technical requirement uh, with uh, the, our solution Synchro. And apart from that, I spent uh, quite a few uh, time in creating knowledge resources for our users around the world. So that's all. What are you, Tathagata? Uh, thanks, Anik. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Tathagato. I'm a product success manager at Virtual City. Uh, like Onik, I am also responsible for helping new users adopt uh, Bentley's 4D and 5D solutions, that is Synchro, uh, in their own projects. I have helped almost uh, 50 users across various geographies to uh, implement Synchro in their projects with the help of training and expert services. Uh, I'm also a civil engineering graduate with a master's degree in global BIM management from Zigurit Institute of Technology. Uh, that's from the Virtuosity site. 
maybe now Madhu, you can introduce yourself and your organization. Thanks. Thanks, all of you. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Madhu. Uh, I'm uh, part of the ITC Limited team, uh, and I'm part of a division that uh, does all the infrastructural development for ITC. Uh, I'm basically a project manager for a million square feet commercial building, which is happening in the heart of the city in Bangalore. And right now that uh, building is, uh, the construction has started and we are like on the excavation phase as of now. And yeah, the, the entire journey is about how uh, we kind of implemented uh, virtual construction that is 4D and 5D for our project. So we'll take it forward. Uh, over to you, Dinesh. You're on mute. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Dinesh. Uh, I come from civil engineer background uh, with a master's degree in uh, construction project management uh, from Red School of Built Environment. Uh, I've been very interested in uh, digital technology uh, from the start of my career. That's where I started my journey with uh, BASFX five years back. And we're working on uh, providing services on uh, digital project management uh, solutions like uh, creating a digital framework as per ISO 19650, uh, which is a global BIM standard, and setting up common data environment 4D, 5D, and digital progress monitoring uh, using the reality capture services. And uh, also being part of uh, uh, scan to BIM projects that go ahead, go on in the in the in the in the organization. Uh, where we do the as built verification and then uh, generate the as built runs for the existing buildings. So that's about me. Over to you, Madhu. You can. Yeah, now I Kirby, think we can, Konik, we can get started with this the webinar. So uh, basically, this will be a free flowing chat where uh, like uh, Madhu and uh, Dinesh will answer questions. So uh, I think. Uh, the first thing that I would really like to ask Madhu to start with is like before we even like delve within Synchro or 4D, uh, it's, it will be good for the audience and also for us uh, to understand the present digitalization process that you follow in ITC. Uh, I also understand that this is not something that you reach in a day. So if you can share you know, some light on the journey that you underwent to reach this stage. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so uh, I'll start with a brief uh, introduction of the project and things like that. So Can there is some amount of background. Uh, so can you just give me a thing to share my screen? Yeah, sure. You should be able to see your screen. Yeah, my screen is visible, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. So uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll first we'll break this uh, this discussion into two parts. First, I'll take you through what ITC does when it comes to the infrastructure development and where our division stands and all those things. And then we'll get into what is our ecosystem and how we have kind of you know broken down these things. So uh, this is a small image of the project that we're doing, and uh, this is this is in Bangalore. And there's a commercial building. It's a lead platinum uh, pre-certified and uh, pre-certified uh, building in Bangalore. And yeah, so to just to give you a gist of ITC Limited, uh, we've, we've had a very big thrust when it comes to uh, our operations towards sustainability and digitalization. And uh, ITC has always been a Indian company, which has always kind of had this uh, sustainability at the helm of things. Uh, we, we were 17 years, we were carbon positive, 15 years, we are solid waste uh, positive and 20 years, we've been water positive. And these are some things which not many people in India know about that ITC has been this way from, you know, uh, a better part of two decades. So the organization that I represent is called Central Projects Organization, which is basically ITC's project arm. Uh, this was formed in 2007 uh, to let our businesses do business and not worry about the project management part of kind of uh, building different uh, asset classes uh, for ITC. If you see on the right side, these are the some of the some of the images of buildings that we built. We built everything from factories, uh, warehouses, residential complexes, and uh, commercial buildings for ITC. And uh, we are our, our organization is 97 plus engineers. We have completed 75 plus projects, which that amount to somewhere around 16 million square feet of projects. We also have done, uh, have started from 2018, we have started doing some external projects for discerning clients, and that uh, comes up to somewhere around 0.9 million square feet we've done of external projects. 
So the pro the project that we are in discussion on is uh, ITC Green Center Phase Two Building Three. This is part of a master plan development for a 33 acre campus that we have in Bangalore. We have already completed two buildings in that phase, which is marked in blue at right, and we are in the process of uh, doing the phase two building three part, which is in green. And these are few images uh, of of what uh, the rendering rendered images of the building, how it will look when it is completed. So just to give you a little bit of background, uh, in India, the adoption, digital adoption has gone from 10% to 40% between 2015 and 2019. Now, this, this was kind of, you know, catapulted by COVID, obviously. But the thing is, this has been kind of increasing. Uh, in 2023, I'm sure that it will be much more than that. Uh, the thrust of COVID was there. Uh, but, but I think this uh, transformation was coming, irrespective of uh, COVID. So there's just a few things about how uh, a company's uh, or a digital maturity of uh, any organization is measured. You have digital indifferent, observer, challenger, and uh, digital native. Now, if you look at it, 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 it says what, uh, uh, what the companies have to kind of be or be doing to be kind of categorized among these four stages. And if you look at India as such, we are still in digital indifferent. And if you look at Singapore, they are a digital observer. So uh, there is not many countries which have gone to digital challenger and digital native. So what I'm trying to kind of impress here is that there is a huge scope uh, for kind of digitalization when it comes to the construction industry as such. Uh, so specifically for CPO, uh, when we started uh, with our digital transformation, we realized that uh, we had to kind of transform digitally in many areas. So we, we, we uh, kind of, uh, developed a digital pentagon which had five areas the basic principle was to kind of have influence in these five areas so that uh, you have your your operational efficiency gets uh, boosted so for design we looked at bim for quality control we looked at forms on cloud for documentation we completely looked at cloud for documentation uh, for project management we looked at plan on cloud and for procurement we are uh, uh, we looked at uh, digital procurement or e-procurement what you call it so basically the e-procurement part is starting from supplier relationship management and all the way or your RFP tendering and all the way it goes up to spend analysis. So this was our basic landscape. So we started looking at different tools uh, which can help us uh, with these things. We also realized that BIM is a fundamental transformation that we need to make because everything that is kind of, you know, every other aspect in the digital pentagon was uh, somehow related to how uh, your BIM processes are set up and how you are able to make uh, BIM models, which can be used for further things of 4D and 5D virtual construction. Uh, even though our plans are still lists with uh, dates, they were lists with dates, uh, they, they lacked visualization. So we had to take that fundamental uh, transformation towards uh, 4D and 5D. Yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, so that is, uh, that is the general landscape uh, for, for IDC. Um, that that really sounded very interesting. So uh, I just think the follow up question, obviously, because we're talking about the synchro software as a in specific over here. So in this workflow, what you did hint at, but if you can explain a bit more about what prompted you to explore 4D and also what introduced what got you introduced to synchro in specific. Okay, so uh, let me take you there because I have many slides on. Yeah. So. As everybody knows that, uh, you know, the construction project schedules are usually uh, listed with dates. Now, the problem with them is they work. They have relationships put in. You can track projects with them. But the problem is scheduling conflicts, logistical challenges, all these things you cannot uh, kind of, you know, simulate in them. So we, we, were, we were in the lookout for something uh, that can simulate a lot of aspects of virtual construction. I'm, I'm, I'm moving away from 4D because 4D is just simulation of dates on a BIM model. We are talking about virtual construction because we are talking about simulating a lot of things about like how your material would come in and how you would do certain things, which sequencing will happen after what. So this was a big driver for us to kind of uh, have this. So now if you look at it, you have schedule, you have cost and you have geometry. Now, how do you put all this together? And how do you kind of you know simulate this uh, in a building so that you're able to look at it visually all the stakeholders are able to kind of look at it and understand the plan better this was 
the very very innate driver that we had when we started on this journey of 4d and 5d so there are few issues that uh, conventionally we face uh, in the industry in india uh, is that you know uh, the conventional msp uh, schedules are like list with dates as i said they have linkages but it is very different to difficult for people who don't lack basic understanding of msp to understand this so what happens is somebody at site uh, a supervisor at site he will not be able to kind of visualize what is happening in the msp but think about it when you kind of you know show it in a bim model it happens this happens after this so what happens is even 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 a supervisory level who is not kind of you know who's only wor worried about the site work is also able to kind of contribute to your plan and yes lack of visualization as i said and lack of logistics sequencing issues all these things were i mean we are riddled with it in any case and uh, the other thing is there is also disputes over actual start and dates and then you will have to go through this entire list look at it but when you have a visual aspect when you have a visual model where you kind of go and kind of update the actuals it is very easy to kind of you know go to that timeline and see what had happened and what didn't so this was something that uh, was also a driver for us and also uh, the lack of site level execution management team the, the the lack of involvement of them in the entire planning and tracking monitoring uh, process was also a problem because you would assume a certain things uh, 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 at at the project management level but at the site execution level there might be some nuances which you will miss and the last part is uh, integration i mean that was a big uh, uh, challenge to integrate the schedule and the bim model together and this was one of the biggest driver why we kind of you know were looking for platforms which can help us with that and synchro was one among them yeah so uh, yeah so i think that answers that question right yeah 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 uh... yeah yeah so i mean uh, like you talked about 4d you know i talked about the different challenges you you know you want to overcome with 4d now i'm i'm very interested to know that like what are the different exercises of 4d that you are is uh, actually doing uh, for this project and uh, can you just show some output or so some examples of how it looks and uh, through and talk up to talk through it uh, with some case study so that would be really interesting for us and the audiences so i'll i'll kind of tell you the initial start journey of how we started doing this and then dinesh yeah. will take you through uh, dinesh will introduce okay. desapex and he'll take you through uh, what uh, what the what what outputs and how these things are coming mm -hmm. out of synchro so basically uh, if you look at any conventional project uh, if you look at those images that i have so you have two basic things you have cost breakdown structure and you have a work breakdown structure so right. these two things are tracked separately for any project and there is no correlation between the bim model and the wbs and the cbs that is a cost breakdown structure and the site photos are no more related so what happens is these all things are fragmented these are tracked separately and you don't have any correlation the point is we wanted to kind of you know bring all this together uh, so what uh, we did is uh, we try to amalgamate the work breakdown structure and the cost breakdown structure now how would we do that work breakdown structure has a uh, work uh, kind of you know broken down in different levels it can go up to nth level and then you have your cost breakdown structure which has the budget heads and the last level would definitely be your bill of quantities at some point the work breakdown structure and the cost breakdown structure will be the same so we kind of amalgamated work breakdown structure and cost breakdown structure together and made one list which will form the backbone of what we will do in the bim model so what we did was these these lists this work breakdown structure that we created by amalgamating with the cost breakdown structure we got our consultants and our bim modelers to put it as uh, the unique ids from that was put as a, a parameter in the bim model so what happened is when you kind of take the bim model and the cost breakdown structure and put it together synchro would auto match these two things and give you a simulation ready to be mm -hmm. kind of you know uh, simulated and taken a look at so mm -hmm. this was a basic thing that we did when it comes to virtual construction and 4d we also have time lapse cameras which are kind of installed uh, in the project uh, through which we kind of look at how what we had planned and what is actually happening at site and we we get a very nice vantage point to track and to kind of you know correct our uh, things going forward so this is the basic gist of what we did i will request uh, dinesh to kind of you know uh, take you through the nitty gritties of this and take you through what are the outputs and 
what uh, okay. they've done on that. Okay. Yes. I must request much as well. Really smart. Yes, just uh, change that presenter mode to Dinesh so that he can start with the uh, yeah. further case study. Yeah. Yeah. So Madhu has uh, put the platform uh, uh, right. So before me jumping into the 4D exercises that we carried out, I would uh, uh, like to uh, introduce Desipex to you guys. Uh, can you get a presenter access? Uh, yeah. Um, I think Madhu's he able to do that. No, you can change it from uh, your end. Uh, fine. Uh, yeah, I'm is it done. It. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Can you see your screen? Yeah. So hope you can see my screen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah perfect. <laughs> So, Desapex is a digital engineering organization uh, which was uh, founded in uh, 2015, uh, working towards uh, digital technology integration in AAC uh, industry to improve the life cycle of the built assets. So, we where we provide uh, complete digital solutions uh, throughout the life cycle of the building. Um, so that uh, where we have various uh, services like digital project management, digital design management, and digital asset management. Uh, so our vision is to adopt digital uh, integration uh, for target value design. Uh, by this, we will achieve the sustainable uh, built environment, which is our long-term vision as well. So we are headquartered in Bangalore, um, and uh, we have uh, uh, offices uh, in Stockholm and Hubli. So in St uh, Stockholm, where we serve all the uh, European clients. Uh, that's a little about the Desapex, and uh, so this. This is uh, something where we stand out of the crowd. Uh, we are the first company in the world and only company in India to have a BSI kite mark for ISO 19650 part one and two. So for those of you who know what is ISO 19650, it is a global BIM standard, which will tell us how the information has to be uh, you know, uh, produced, managed, and then shared uh, toward the uh, uh, no, de uh, delivery phase of the project. Uh, so we have we have been audited um, every year uh, five four projects and then uh, they do check all the aspects that uh, whether we meet the ISO standards and uh, based on that uh, we we revise our certification on a yearly basis. So talking about the services, um, uh, the first uh, we'll talk about uh, uh, design uh, development management where we have or uh, we develop the. Uh, 2D drawings into a 3D model. So, and set up this entire framework as a rise from 19650. And once we have the model in place, uh, we we carry out the various other uh, exercises which will uh, you know, uh, add more value to the construction. Uh, like we resolve the clash coordination and then uh, give a clash field drawings uh, uh, for the execution. And quantity takeoff uh, for cost estimations and the shop drawings in detail. Uh, um, then we have 4D and 5D services that we provide to see the virtual construction and estimation. And in, when it comes to digital project management, uh, we do help the clients at the, each stage of the project uh, with various uh, exercises. Like in briefing stage, we do set up the entire framework as per ISO 19650, the documentations that are required uh, before starting of the project, uh, like EIR, BIM execution plans, and uh, all those CD documents. And in design phase, we do audit the models based on certain param BIM parameters and help them in clash coordination. And in construction, we do uh, help in training the contractors uh, and then uh, as built to verification and then uh, construction progress monitoring. At the stage of handover, uh, so we use the laser scanners to capture the entire uh, uh, site and then compare with the model and then update the model uh, all the ch all the things that have uh, changes that happened on site uh, will be updated in the model and handover so when it comes to uh, a design uh, you know asset management uh, 
So we have the laser scanners. So for a lot of the existing buildings, we may not have uh, the present as built drawings. So where we use this reality capture technology to capture the building and with the help of the point cloud, uh, we developed the 3D model and that that's what we call the scan to bin. So once the model is ready, add in all the uh, non geometrical information to the model and also integrate the BMS uh, system that uh, building management system that has. So and make it as a digital twin. And this digital twin will be taken uh, for, uh, for the operational maintenance, uh, through the operational maintenance for asset management, energy management, uh, building, man building analytics and maintenance management. So this, this is about a few services that we provide. Um, and then uh, coming to the question, uh, so uh, different 4D exercises that we uh, for, uh, followed for this particular. Uh, so, so Madhu explained in detail about what 4D, 5D, uh, how it is being uh, linked and all those things. So let's get into some of the 4D exercises that help the project teams to visualize and manage the construction projects more effectively by integrating the time and schedule information into 3D model. So there is always this question of uh, when is the right time to start 4D? So whenever we go on with this kind of service, when is the right time to start? So the ideal time to start 4D is during the early, early planning and design phase of construction project. Uh, this allows uh, for the integration of the time and scheduling considering from the beginning because 4D is not a single time activity. So we do develop the 4D models uh, using the cons con consultant models on the initial schedule that we have. And later those will be developed in more detail to the contractor's model and the schedule during the construction phase. Mm -hmm. So I'll talk about this with an example later, these two stages of the 4D that we do. So coming, coming to the first activity where, where uh, Madhu also highlighted about that the state parameter that we need to have. Um, I'm hearing the disturbance from, let me just mute. Yeah. Uh, okay. So com coming to the shared uh, parameter. So we need to have a common shared parameter between the 3D model and the schedule. So basically, so the, that's where when you develop this work breakdown structure, we created this unique WPS uh, um, IDs. So which will help. So this first, this common shared parameter between the 3D model and the project schedule, which will help us to align or assign this uh, uh, time time aspect to the uh, 3D model. That's the first activity to start with, and then. So this is a 3D model and you have a shared parameter that is being uh, the, the native uh, is a Revit here we are using. So when you uh, import the shared parameter and add all these uh, WBS IDs, uh, that's that's where it, later this model will be taken to the Synchro platform. Then we do this automation and all the other activities. But the main important step here is to assist the design team uh, about this process and explain them and share the WBS with them. And the model has to be developed in line with this work breakdown structure. So that's very important. So we had multiple workshops about this WBS IDs, 3D model, how it has to be developed with the entire design team during the detailed design phase. And the next thing is how, how we link. This, this is an, again, an, uh, for how, how it has to look, the virtual construction, then we have to create uh, we went on to do the resources, resource grouping to task by creating auto matching rules. So if we don't have this uh, common shared parameter, it will take a lot of time to uh, select each and every activity, create the sets and then add it to that particular task. Since we have gone through that entire process from the start of the design. So now it, our, our job is to just filter and then uh, have this uh, resource groups ready, assign the profile. Appearance profiles and then use auto matching rule to attach it to the task. So that's uh, one. I'll uh, just talk about the uh, with the, the study. output, right? One of the output. Yeah, one of the output. Okay. So uh, this is a simulation video. The present simulation video you're seeing shows the consultant model. Uh, that's the with the schedule at the end of the detail design phase. This this is a dynamic what visual representation helps everyone 
you know, involved in the project from the clients to consultant and contractors who is coming later to understand how the project will evolve from the start to finish. So let's, if you see now this present model will be uh, handed over to the contractors and then later the contractor will break down this model into uh, one more level. So let's take an example of say if, um, so we are uh, having this uh, slab. So here we have a single activity that goes on with the appearance profile from left to right. But when uh, this, uh, when the contractor comes into the place, this uh, slab will happen in three to four posts. So they will have multi the, the schedule will be taken to one more level. So then uh, this model will be broken down to that uh, WBS level and then have and then do it the same process again, have the WBS IDs attached and then assign it so that we will have the complete, you know, that's what I was talking about the two stages. So at the end okay. of the consultant's work, we have one and then this model will be taken uh, during the construction phase to uh, have even more detailed uh, like like uh, all the schedule or or the logistics, whatever all the issues that uh, Madhu was highlighting about, uh, we will be taking care in this. So I have one more case study to uh, just uh, show this. Before you go on to this one, I'm, I'm just curious. In if you just go back to the last uh, you know simulation, the last one. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing I noticed that the excavation part is shown in a very detailed way like uh, can you uh, yeah, talk I will, more about that I will, yeah. I will i will talk about that uh, because in the other video also i have about excavation but i'll just uh, uh, expand yeah. it here in this particular video we are finished with the uh, uh, construction of uh, the contractor is on board for the excavation and okay. in terms of modeling, if I start with the, how, how did we model this excavation? So initially we did a laser scanning to get the entire present ground profile. Uh, so okay. that we get an accurate quantity later, which because we are not just thinking about 5D. Uh, it's been very clear with ITC and Modo from the start that our end goal is 4D and 5D. Mm -hmm. So whenever we just, our end goal will be 5D. So we just think, okay, if we are doing 4D, how will this lead to 5D? So that's when mm -hmm. we also we also had the thought of always how do we get the quantities right for all the ta uh, tasks. So now mm -hmm. this profile was created from the point cloud data, and then later each okay. uh, uh, it was divided by layers and uh, and divided into areas as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you see, you have different areas that has been uh, executing, okay. uh, uh, yeah, and it's also very detailed, yeah, yeah very, into yeah. more detail. And also, you have the shoring that has been. Uh, if you see, you have the shoring that is going on, and the, even the nails, mm -hmm. dewatering wells, and everything. So all the BOQ mm -hmm. line items. If you even if you talk in our EIR document, we have this uh, thing that all the BOQ line item needs to be modeled. So that's okay. that's. The, it is a complete client driven. I appreciate ITC for that taking that. So otherwise, it doesn't uh, it, it doesn't happen uh, in general because uh, nobody goes into this detail to get in mm. because we see a lot of uh, you know, outputs in this. Uh, I'll also show about the plan baseline how we are doing the progress. Just cutting in, uh, in there. See, uh, yeah. Nick, so what happens? Uh, in a general, in a project, what happens is we go through many stages like concept, schematic, mm -hmm. detail design, then you get into construction, then you get into asphalt. So the details that are available in a schematic stage and the details that are available from detail design are poles apart. And when, once you get into construction, you do bring your uh, shop drawings and things like that. So when do you, so the, the, the absolutely correct question is when do I start with this process? The point mm -hmm. here is uh, the, the, there is a general belief that, you know, you can only do 4D with a construction model. And that is something yeah. that we, uh, I think uh, the team was able to kind of break through that. How we did it was, you remember these uh, WBS IDs that we had, these unique WBS mm -hmm. IDs. We asked right. our consultants right. to put those as a parameter in their BIM model. So what you have is you have two sets. You have a design model where you can run a very, uh, a very upper level overview of the schedule with the mm -hmm. consultant model. And when the contractor comes in, he gives you details. Like say, for example, when the excavation okay. guy came in, we asked him, that you will have to make a BIM model which kind of has all these details. So he kind of breaks it down. So when you have a consultant model, the excavation is just excavation. It does not have anything else. It does not have shoring, right. it does not have uh, micro piles, it does not have mm -hmm. dewatering wells and whatsoever. So when the contractor breaks it down, 
then what happens is he adds more items to the wps item so if if you're at level four the contractor might add level five and level six and then he goes ahead and adds that parameter in his bimon so what happens is you would see two sets of things at any cross section of the tire of the project that you have one schedule which is like completely detailed that is excavation in this mm -hmm. case and then the rest is the consultant mode so when when yeah, our right. civil contractor comes in he will make a detailed one then the civil part will become very detailed and the facade and the MEP part would remain uh, the consultant model to see if there are some some basic issues like say a uh, 12th floor slab is not ready and you're trying to install the cooling tower now these things you can see it with the consultant model and when the contractor comes in you get into more details so that is uh, something that I wanted to add to what the mission yeah yeah okay thanks for adding that yeah so what uh, then we, when the when the construction start we do update the schedule on a regular basis and then try to extract the simulation videos uh, baseline versus plan versus actual so since we already have the resource attached to this particular task so we try to pull out the quantities later and also try to get what is the physical uh, versus actual quantity that is being uh, executed so this is one of the simulation video uh, so where it is uh, baseline versus uh, plan versus actual that is happening. So you see different uh, visual representations of the progress. Mm -hmm. So that's about 4D exercises and some of the outputs. Uh, later we will see a little bit about the 5D. Um, and just can you talk like how the simulations and uh, this exercises like helped you from 4D point? I will come to 5D part later. So how did and what are the benefits you you know got from this simulation? If you just can briefly talk about it. So maybe I think what I'll do is if you can uh, let me share my screen. I'll show you one uh, okay. one thing how we report our uh, progress. Mm -hmm. So you'll get okay. to know how we do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have made you present your mother. Yeah. So I hope you guys can see my screen. Yeah, yeah. I can see this. Okay. Just explaining this is the virtual construction part, which is the baseline one, planned and actual. And these are actually time lapse cameras that we've installed at site. Okay. okay. And so what we do is every month when we report our progress to, I mean, whatever our senior management or our uh, uh, general manager, we kind of go mm -hmm. with this slide and this is it. And uh, mm -hmm. this is what we show. So we say that, okay, uh, this is what we had planned as per our virtual construction. And you see the, the green ones are in progress and you could see it at site, how things are happening. Now, this is what happens when an excavation contractor sits with you on virtual construction and tells that this is how I'm going to do the work. And when you capture it, you can see how similar this is. I mean, to, to a level of say 80, 70%, you could see where the excavators are working is that is where we had planned initially. And that's how the sequence is yeah. happening. Right. So, so what happens is this brings in such level of visualization and you know the understanding among the teams that this is what we are supposed to do. And uh, things happen very, uh, very, very, uh, what to say, seamlessly. So mm -hmm. this, you just think when you go to, I mean, when you go to somebody and you project uh, your, your project this way, the visual aspect itself brings in a lot of, uh, uh, what do you say? Uh, Clarity. Uh, yeah. Understanding. And the stakeholders yeah. understand what is happening very clearly. Yeah, so, so you already collaborated at the 4D stage with your contractors, like how things should be done, or they have shared yeah. their input. Okay. Yep. That's, that's and that really is how the way it happens. See, when you talk about a project, uh, the stakeholders are many. There are there are consultants, there are there are contractors, there is mm -hmm. there is the client. Uh, so, so what happens is all these things have to amalgamate together. You should have all the stakeholders to stakeholders together. Why do you have all these stakeholders? Because they have a certain amount of subject matter expertise. That is why they're there. Right. right. So yeah. you will have to bring that in. So when a contractor comes in, he knows. Like say, for example, when we started, when we did the, the excavation uh, 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 simulation with our consultant model, we, we, we started our excavation from the sides. And when the contractor came in, he said that I'm not going to do it this way. I will only do it from the center. I, I will start with mass excavation in the center and I'll go do the sides later. So there is an entire change in the way we thought and, 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 you know, this visualization brought it in. It is not that if you had gone with a list with dates like MSP, the contractor would have told, yes, this is okay. But he wouldn't have bought into the visual so, aspect of things. We are not showing like, that. Did you that take that feedback? Like you wanted this. 
So did you take that feedback and implement it in the model in the WBS 100%. also immediately? 100%. Yes, 100 percent. At that point, we had only to change the WBS in a way that he is talking about and then it auto matches and you could just see the simulation happen. So, so that is when uh, everything were like matched so well. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so if that, you that, think, that, yeah, if you think that that knowledge it also got captured in a digital way when you created this project, yeah, and maybe yeah. later you can utilize it. It's, that's that's really interesting. Yeah. So now, Absolutely. like from 4D, I'm also interested to go like your 5D journey. Like, uh, like what are the exercises you did in 5D? You talked about how you mapped the WPS. Uh, with your cost breakdown structure and somehow Perfect. they got similar and that helped you. So can you talk yeah. about your 5D journey and so some of the outputs or uh, the things that you have yeah. in your 5D uh, part? I will make your presenter again, Dinesh. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'll just kind of, you know, I give you a brief of what was the intent of doing 5D in any case. Uh, the point is, uh, 5D is again, I mean, everybody talks about EVM and stuff like that, but 5D too is to put a visual aspect to your cost because you're already mm -hmm. doing 4D. It was, it was very important to overlay the 5D. 5D for us, when it came uh, as, as a client or as ITC for us, the most important thing was cost to compute. We needed mm -hmm. to know that each package from the BOQ line items, how much uh, is, are we going to consume from the budget when the project right. is going to end? So give you an uh, 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 example of the excavation itself. Uh, to understand, uh, we needed to get quantities from the BIM model and to understand, okay, this is the quantities that you have in the BIM model and this is how much you have contracted out. Say you've contracted out 100 cubic meter. Now you realize that it's 98 cubic meter. So that that two cubic meter, which uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a saving, will be plowed back into our budget. And we as project management individuals, we understand that there is a surplus there and that can be plowed to some other. If you had wait, if you had to wait to understand this till the end of that package, it would take us eight months. And so certain things would have kind of you know spiraled out of control. So this right. was the biggest driver to understand our budget, how much uh, we have contracted out, how much is our actual spend, and what will we spend at the end of this package for each package. Now understand, I mean, when you have that uh, information with you, you understand the power that you have as project management uh, individuals to kind of mm -hmm. run the show. So this was the basic intent. I'll let uh, Dinesh take you through uh, how it was done yeah. and what is the output of it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, to start with, I would like to uh, talk about two things. One is static 5D and dynamic 5D. So people still have this 5D is just uh, extracting the quantities and then getting the cost of it. Uh, but still, we'll differentiate that two things. So uh, basically, when you when you talk about static 5D, it is more uh, concentrating on the developing model and extracting the quantities and then getting the cost estimates. So this activity is is uh, you know used uh, generally in early design stages for uh, preliminary cost estimates at high level project plan. This mm -hmm. this this will not have the real time insights uh, you know uh, into the cost variations on the construction progress. That's where the dynamic 5D comes, where you. Uh, extend this 3D model into time and then uh, relate the cost to each uh, task that happens. So along this dynamic you know, scheduling and the progress uh, tracking. So this, this has lots of value during the construction phase and throughout the project life cycle. And that's a little bit about static and 5D. And why be 5D been? Uh, initially, Madhu has spoken about cost estimate, budget management and cost uh, forecasting as well. So I would like to add one more aspect is asset lifecycle manager. So at the end, um, so beyond the construction, 5D can uh, continue to be a, adding the value during the operational phase of the building because it, it provides a comprehensive database of the cost and the schedule information that's been used for maintenance renovation that later during the future because the, the model will have all the non-geometrical information in terms of time and the cost uh, related to that. So in terms of exercises that we taught, so so when, when we did this uh, uh, task for 4D, so you already have the uh, resources, or you mean to say the 3D elements that has been attached to the task. So right. now the next step would be is to extract the quantities for all the assigned tasks, uh, assigned resources. So that's where we use this uh, scripts to uh, calculate volume, area, and then length, 
uh, all all those uh, the quantities uh, with the scripts. So you so have to see right the, in some of the cases of quantities, right? Yeah. So we 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 have to customize some of the formulas because uh, the single uh, uh, activity might have three four BOQ line items. So single formula cannot be used for that. So right, for example, right. if I'm if I'm extracting for single activity, I might have volume, I might have area, I might have length because I have three different line items. Those three right. different line items have three different costs. So I need to extract right. the volumes uh, in three different user fields and then uh, have a uh, consolidated cost uh, uh, coming at the end. So that's an activity that uh, that's the first thing to extract the quantities in line with BOQs. And once the quantities are ready, we also can we went on to use on the resource utilization. So this particular mm -hmm. thing is about the artwork. Uh, so we have uh, day wise, what is the planned um, uh, earthwork in terms of quantity? And we will okay. we'll have what is the maximum that we could do it in a day. So this will help us to analyze if they, if we had gone uh, anywhere beyond our maximum limit in terms of planning, where you can uh, uh, come back to the schedule and then work on the schedule. That is one use uh, one exercises of the resource utilization when you have the quantities in place. So now you have the quantities. The next uh, exercise was to bring in the BOQ uh, line items into the synchro. So once we bring in the BOQ line item, so copy the all this. Uh, uh, quantities that have been extracted again using the scripts to these BOQ line items and okay. this BOQ line item will have the cost and then it will multiply and give us the budget uh, for a consolidated budget at the end. So that's what you're seeing is uh, here for this particular excavation package. Uh, this is the budget that has been derived from the model and this is this has been ordered uh, before and later. So then uh, cost to complete, uh, Madhu has spoken about it. So we have the budget, we have the ordered amount, uh, we have the build amount that is, we brought in the build amount that is happening uh, 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 for, for the construction uh, phase and also planned and actual value use. So this cost to complete is being calculated with the budget uh, from the model and then you have the build and then and you have the actual cost okay. that is being updated from the schedule. So whenever you update the schedule, your earned value, planned value, and the cost value will automatically update based on your progress. So these are some of the exercises. Uh, if Madhu, if you can add about some cost to complete, if you wanted to add something. You can yeah, um, yeah, so, uh, just adding to what uh, Dinesh was trying to tell is, uh, there is a certain step that we have followed before all these things happened. I think uh, we both missed that uh, when we were discussing. Today, when we are doing modeling of our BIM model, we are not following LODs. We are following something yeah. called level of information. Why level of information is important? Because as a project management team or as a team that is kind of you know doing, uh, I mean doing design. I mean design is a completely different workflow when you're talking about project management. Up till what point do you want to track? Now, say for example, uh, if I tell my consultants that you model as per your BOQ line item. So what I tell them is if you have uh, your pipe is in running meter, you please model in running meter. If your uh, quantity, your concrete is in cubic meter, you please model in uh, cubic meter. If it is lump sum, you model it as lump sum, as one piece, one LS, one. Say, say for example, you are supplying an AHU. You don't have to get into the nitty gritties of the AHU for coding. You can only say that, okay, it's modeled as one piece. So what happens in this is when you do your model as per LOI, your your BOQs are already taken care of because mostly what happens is the consultants are the people who give you specification and who give you BOQ and your model is already as per that. And if you look at the WBS, it is already connected to the model. So you understand the, the integration part at the back end, you've already integrated everything. So when you bring it in, it becomes very easy. Uh, so basically, if you're looking at a, a concrete model, you would get cubic meter from it. and you don't get anything else which is not required. So what happens is the consultant is happy. He doesn't have to model something like reinforcement for you to get uh, metric done. Yes, but if you need metric done, then you will have to. If, if he's giving uh, reinforcement in metric done, then he has to model it. So if it doesn't, and if he gives it as something else, then he doesn't have to. So what happens is there is a uh, there is a there is a certain stop gap that you get with your consultants, and they are able to kind of decide that okay, this item I will do as item rate, and I'll kind of. So that is the first part. So once that is done, when uh, when you come to the 5D part. I don't need to kind of track more than my BOQ line items. I don't need to get into the small bolts and nuts of things. I mean, I want to, as a project management, uh, this thing, I need to see if the work is done at site. 
and what is my cost to compute? And work done at site is coming from your merchant construction and your 4D tracking is, and uh, your, your cost is coming from your 5D, which is coming from your bill of quantities, which everybody understands because that is where you've been ordered. Your contractor, you, and everybody, uh, all the stakeholders are at the same page. So the point is not to get into too, too much depth of these things and keep it at a level that you need to track. And that helps uh, not, not to complicate uh, this entire exercise and to keep it at bay and to ensure that you're able to kind of continue doing this. It's not about one off. I mean, you do it once and you're not able to do it again. You should be able to repeat this process for every package, irrespective of that being a lump sum order, works contract, or design and build contract. You should be able to replicate this. Now, the workflows have to be set that. So, this is a general gist of, I mean, how we were able to achieve whatever we have achieved when it comes to five projects. And why okay. you have restricted at that point and not gone any levels below. So uh, here I can see like you have bought some of the cost externally and you have compared with the cost that you got from uh, Synchro and right. And there you yeah. found out some difference on that. Yeah. yeah. So, and, 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 and like when you bring this, you know, data from externally and you compare with data that you get from Synchro. So at the end, what difference did you saw and, you know, how did it help? Did you want to take that or? Yeah, that's fine. So if you see the, the order, the budgeted completion is being calculated from the model. So all the BOQ line in terms based on the quantities that's been modeled. And then this is the ordered amount that has been uh, issued. So there's a there's an almost a difference of, uh, you know, uh, two crores of uh, amount. Uh, okay. Because uh, that, that's, that's where, uh, and also it will help us in understanding that at the start of that, so where you have this uh, uh, savings of that much, and you'll know that, uh, initially, so that you can use these two codes uh, wisely in other aspects. That's a saving for the uh, for project mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. No, so answering, I think, uh, answering Anik's question, why we are bringing something externally into Synchro? The question is, I mean, you you already have a BIM model and it is absolute and geometry. What are you bringing from outside? Mm -hmm. You're bringing in the build quantity. Why we are bringing yeah. it is because in this case, we, we are still kind of experimenting, right? We don't know how far... Right the right and stuff like that so what we are doing is we are doing a lidar survey for our excavation so we are we are, we are getting a laser scanner every month and they are scanning the entire place and seeing how much excavation is being done so that uh, uh i mean to integrate with that that with synchro is not possible as of yet so what we are doing is we are bringing that values as an excel sheet trying to kind of you know put it here so our build billing is still done by the qss using laser scanner at site so Okay. That is something that we are manually bringing in, and that is what you see. Now, when it gets into, so why why in excavation? Excavation is like a, I mean, how do you say this? Excavation is not a very geometric kind of a thing, right? It is, you mm -hmm. don't, the way you have modeled is not how you cut, you don't cut it in right, tools, right. you cut it in however the excavator works. But when you go above excavation, when you get into foundation, when you get into columns, they're, they're mostly geometric. So i don't think this billing has to be brought at that point from the outside so what we will do is at that point we will use what is there uh, in synchro so that is what i was trying to tell you see every case is different in its own way and it has it poses its own challenges so what happens is uh, i think the team or the project management team has to kind of ensure that you know their workflows are in such a way that they are not very regimental and they are able to kind of you know fit in uh, into different uh, places i mean for different packages as I said, there might be some package which is lumps of, uh, where you don't need to get into this 5D part at all. No need to get into quantities. You would say that okay, this lab is completed and you pay. So you understand. So 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 the complexities are different. So you mm -hmm. need to kind of pick and choose what uh, you would do to kind of you know uh, circumnavigate uh, whatever issues. Mm -hmm. And the process so would be different for each of the packages. Hundred percent, because it depends on how. See again, procurement also doesn't follow a certain pattern. There is a procurement strategy that the project management team will have. Certain packages you might give as design and build. Certain packages you might give as works contract. Some some packages would be straight lumps. Now, uh, how do you capture these things? Uh, the the aspect also is the schedule is not only comprehensive with work. The schedule also has intangible items like procurement. It has uh, design. It does not have a physical manifestation on the uh, on the on the, on the uh, model, model itself. Model, yeah. So in model. this case, what we did was we modeled cubes. 
of all the intangibles outside uh, the the revit model and we have that as a as a as a i mean as a cluster so what okay. happens is we that is so you you are you are looking at a, a physical manifestation of an intangible uh, item in your schedule so that is also done so so you understand so these things keep changing so there might be certain intangibles which may come in so so what you have to do is at that point you have to model that intangible and mm -hmm. kind of connect it to your schedule so that is something that we have to, and this workflow has worked for us because we we are we are not very regimental we have not put too many processes around it and we have just tried to kind of you know as and when things come we are like trying to handle it we have a gentle process of how to handle it but we are not making it very regimental this has helped us a lot mm. okay so, so i guess this is really exciting in terms like uh, you know definitely. how you are using synchro to its full potential and the concept that you know talked about is you know it's not about static 5d it's about the dynamic 5d model where you have 3d 4d and 5d all of them are connected and you know i believe that's where you know synchro is quite um, powerful in how what it allows you and in terms of creating formulas and scripts uh, and it's, it's, it's not just yeah the 4d simulation it's way beyond yeah. that that's mm -hmm. what i guess mm -hmm. is the biggest uh, takeaway from this yeah uh, another yeah. thing is like i believe that uh, your model is cloud hosted so uh, uh, synchro you have utilized synchro control right so like can you yeah. briefly explain how you utilize synchro control in in your collaboration and how it helped yeah. you in your collaboration yeah so uh, to start with uh, see we, we initially started with a private project uh, and then where we used to export uh, uh, a DWFX formats from the Revit. Uh, let's say if I have 10 models, I used to export 10 DWFX and bring all those into Synchro. Uh, and then whenever we we have the synchronization issues, say if I have uh, finished certain package, I have assigned a, a few uh, resources to the task. And then whenever the synchronization happens, there, there was a little minor uh, you know, uh, missing of the assigned resource from the task and all those activities. But that's when we were introduced to the synchro control. So synchro control, I just uh, uh, I just have to create an uh, I model and then link all my uh, native Revit di uh, files directly. So I, I save a lot of time of exporting you know, every model into different formats and then bringing it to or synchro and then again synchronize and all those things. So what I do here, sure. whenever there is a revision in the model, so I replace that file uh, folder and then uh, it will direct using these connections. I just do the synchronization and every every Friday or whenever there is a revision uh, or a version, so I just synchronize. So everything gets synchronized in my central or cloud hosted model. So like, uh, do you have a routine or you do it every time you have a change? No, I, 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 because see, uh, see, what we have here is every Friday we get a models. Uh, mm -hmm. Thursday, yeah, that uh, was what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, we get a models, and then I can uh, uh, set this uh, automated every Friday. You run the synchronization, so mm -hmm. I just have to right. replace the file, and then it runs the synchronization on every Friday. Right. So that 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 automation is available. And then you access that file uh, uh, from the cloud, and then you start working on that 4D file. That, right. That's how we are using the synchro. Sometimes uh, there's there's still lagging a little bit, but uh, if you wanted to work on the private, again you can work on the private, and then resubmit your resubmit uh, uh, file. Yeah. yeah, you resubmit. So it just uh, updates everything that you have worked offline in, in your cloud model. So what what happens when you work on the private project? And you submit the project into the cloud, and then it synchronizes, and all the changes that you did in offline will get, uh, you know, synchronized uh, online mode. Right. So that's right. how uh, that's how the cloud uh, work getting directly with the native Revit files, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it is a yeah. complete Revit uh, file. So uh, I haven't exported anything to any other formats. We are just synchronizing the Revit uh, files. Yeah, so the connectors took care of the rest. Yeah, exactly. The connectors took care. Yeah. Okay. Because all these models of uh, georeference uh, all have the same coordinate exactly. system. So that, that's mm -hmm. very important. And also, uh, all these files have this uh, 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 folder names and the file naming convention that's been followed. Uh, that's the first step that uh, we set up in this project. So all those things are helping out in, in, in this uh, way. Yeah. Yeah. So that's about the cloud, the hosted 
because all the models are correctly geo coordinated when you like uh, federate them they sit on top of one another seamlessly exactly. and you don't need to... mm. exactly so yeah mm. cool and uh, going forward like you mentioned on the re while you were uploading the uh, cloud hosted project like within the cloud hosted yeah. project that uh, yeah. when, while you are bringing some private files on, the, on those lines right you face some of the glitch right so yeah. i guess as the virtual subscription also has that uh, customizable training or a mentoring kind of sessions right so yeah. how did that come into picture or how did it helped you to like uh, achieve the results that you are looking forward to as a 4D and 5D related uh, derivables. So how did it yeah. help uh, in that so, case? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so as when, yeah, the, the, so we have, we have got a great support uh, from Virtual City. So Anik was, Anik was the one who gave the training for us initially one year back when we got into Synchro. And uh, so we, we had a complete uh, module uh, you know, from the start to end. We have been trained on that. And and then uh, during this uh, implementation process, we have been stuck in many places, and uh, uh, our team was there to help us. Uh, we used to connect and also have a long, uh, you know, discussion workshops. How about the workflows? How this can be put it in the cloud uh, platform and all those things? Because initially there was a lot of uh, uh, glitches that we were facing. Then everything has been resolved later once we get into the cloud. And uh, so we, uh, the training was uh, really helpful and uh, like to thank uh, from Desapex and ITC. It was a good uh, the, uh, implementation training partner from Virtual City. Yeah. Th thanks for your kind words. Uh, yeah. I remember these those. I, I also, okay. yeah, I also need to add because see, uh, and Bentley's uh, help, uh, you know, when you raise a ticket and then you you come up within a half day or one day, you based on the priority that I said, so we get a response and uh, the Bentley team also connects and uh, resolve. If there's any synchronization error that happens, uh, if synchronization fails, uh, when I raise a ticket and then we connect and then uh, issue that, uh, resolve that issue. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for your kind. I, I remember those uh, sessions, long sessions we had on brainstorming how to have the workflow set up. Uh, you know, how the technical um, in aspect can be mapped with your requirement. Yeah. So I'm glad that it was all helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think like we are almost near the end of uh, this session. So like over here, I think it one relevant question to ask, especially to Madhu would be like, how do you plan to take this journey to the next level? If you have identified the next step of goals uh, that you want to share with the audience. So uh, the goal has always been, I mean, for the audience who don't know what a PIM and an AIM is. PIM is a project information model and AIM is an asset information model. Now, the goal has always been to go seamlessly from a project information model to an asset information model. So at the end of the day, it is about kind of, you know, all these data that you're creating during the project might as well be 4D, cost information, your checklist, your model, your design evolution. All these things form part of your, uh, your project information model. Now, when this project information model need not be tweaked and you can give it to your asset information model and your, your facilities team can just pick that up and run with it. It becomes a great help for all the project management teams. Now, this is the goal. The goal is to take the asset information model, to take all the static uh, data that is available, like your BIM model, your 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 uh, commissioning checklist, what happened, the history of it, when it was installed, what happened, or all those things, and then you overlay whatever you have installed in your building. Those, those are the sensors that you install of what is happening, how the how the machinery is running, and finally you make your digital twin sit on top of it, and then you have a true representation of your building, which your which your facilities team can kind of take a look at it and kind of run the entire show going forward. So the journey doesn't start the day you start handing over. The journey starts from PIM. The journey starts from the day you start making static data available when you're generating static data. So as project teams, uh, this was the biggest driver that we have. We want to ensure that whatever we have generated data during our project information model goes seamlessly to the asset information model. No information is lost. And all that information is used to kind of put up a digital twin, which can be kind of used to kind of run the entire. Thing. And this is this is the uh, 
ultimate goal that we have for this project and uh, I'm, I'm 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 pretty confident that we will be able to achieve that so that being said uh, 4d and 5d is a very important tool for the project management teams because uh, visualization changes a lot of aspects of how you look at schedules so this becomes very important and it has changed for us today uh, if you look at anybody who's there at site uh, he's already visualized and seen the schedule and that i mean photographic memory as you say that you know when he has looked at the schedule he knows that you know this has to happen after this and he's not relying on list with dates i constantly say list with dates list with dates are very cumbersome they're not easy to track easy to understand but you, you kind of have a visual uh, representation of it it is like a movie it is imprinted in your head you might forget i mean you might forget most of it but 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 you you will remember every every important aspect of it and that is uh, and and you can always go back to the video which is available on the cloud you can go look at it and you also can kind of okay okay this changed that has changed and so so this is very dynamic so this is something that we are targeting uh, to see if every aspect of construction can be digitalized and ultimately your facility management or 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 your running of your building becomes so efficient and no no data is lost that uh, you know you don't have you you don't have to be kind of reliant on anybody's uh, memory or anything like that so that's the ultimate goal mm -hmm. yeah that, that's uh, and to just add one uh, and also it should it will help it helped us a lot in this project because it's a client driven so that's something that uh, uh, all of them has to look at so that's very <laughs> important yeah Mm -hmm. I think that the vision is really great, and I'm, I'm looking forward to how we can help you further in this journey. Um, now, this is really phenomenal what you have done, and I'm sure this will be a project will be you know will be used for studies for people around the world, and especially from India's perspective. Like there are many organizations who are also looking forward to start this journey. And, and and you know what suggestions would you give them or what uh, are the you know um, you know what are the things that you want to say before they start you know they should be careful about or the thoughts they should have or the philosophy they should follow before they start their digitalization journey there's a great question anik but i think uh, if you mm -hmm. allow me to share my screen i'll show you yeah, one yeah. slide which can yeah. sure sure just just a second Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, at ITC, we don't call digital. Call it it's beyond technology and it is a cultural revolution for us. Because uh, if you see the image, it talks about digital maturity, discipline and standardization and cultural change. These are all three facets of how you can kind of implement something in any organization. The, the only way to move forward is to improve your digital maturity as you go ahead. To kind of make it more native to yourself, to to kind of make it innate way of working. Now that being said, discipline and standardization is also very important because those are which drives what is already being set up. And yes, everything cannot be solved with digital maturity and uh, discipline and standardization. There is a certain amount of cultural change that you have to make. When you get into a digital foray, you cannot say that I will work the way I'll work, and I want the digital platform to help me. Most of the digital platforms are meant for the masses, so they might solve, say, 70%, 60% of your problems. Your 30% and 40% of your problems still at large. And what we have noticed is that 30% and 40%, I think a lot of them are based on culture, and uh, they've got nothing to do with uh, how you actually do work. So we, we, had, we had this lot of sessions that we had, internal brainstorming, with a lot of other people. I mean, a lot of industry leaders who are kind of looking at digitalization in a big way. And uh, not only on the 4D part, our, our project is very digitalized when it comes to uh, the way we kind of have our uh, common data environment, how we do BIM modeling, and how our BIM modeling is done on cloud and all those things. So that being said, it needed a lot of cultural change. And yes, whatever we decided, we standardized and we kind of had a discipline put on. So this works together. It cannot uh, be like, you know, I will only uh, think about digital maturity and not think about standardization and not think about discipline, not think about cultural uh, change. So 
I, I hope you got the gist. It is like it is it is a basic. Uh, it it is a it is a circle. You need to kind of influence this in every level. Understood. Yeah, yeah. They have to think of these three aspects together when they think about its journey. And of, I think uh, digital I, the biggest. Uh, I mean, one of the biggest takeaways over here is the push came from the client side. I mean, the, generally people find it difficult to evaluate how a digitalization helps a project, especially the client. That's what we keep on hearing from many like, consultants. Mm. But mm -hmm. over here, because the push came from the client side, I believe you know this is a visionary approach. So hopefully, other people also catches up. Yeah, but there is another side also to it. Uh, if you look at our excavation contractor who's made a BIM model and uh, who has done the entire thing in BIM, this is the first time I guess somebody has done a BIM model for excavation because the negative model you're removing something, you're not adding something. Right, right. Uh, so, so when he made a negative model and did all this, he did clash detection and he kind of. So what happens is. He is saying going forward, irrespective of what the client says, he will end up making a video. Exactly. But he's saying it saved a lot of time when it comes to kind of you know clash detection with his uh, driven nails, which were kind of hitting their uh, dewatering uh, wells and things like that. They managed the angles of their uh, uh, driven nails in such a way that they are like, you know, so so these kind of things. I mean, yes, it needs to be client driven is something that we have also realized. Yes, it has to be. Uh, but but what happens is once I think uh, people kind of get into it and they understand that that at some level it also kind of helps your organization. Mm. You don't have to do it in a big level. I mean you're talking about a small part like excavation. And if an excavation contractor is to come back and say that I will do it uh, as as a, as a standard going forward. The point is I that mean, I believe this is the cultural change that you're talking about. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It is about the cultural difference. Right. Okay, I yeah. guess we have kind of overshot our uh, duration, but still, uh, like this was a very lively and informative session. Hopefully, everyone who listens to it will be benefited in some way or the other. Uh, I guess, Pratik, uh, your concluding remarks. Uh, yes. So, first of all, like a big congratulations to the ITC and DISAPEX team for pulling this out. In a very disciplined fashion, like uh, for digital construction approach, how we need to be to the point and uh, like disciplined in the sense that right from the primary stage of designing, how we need to manage the WBS IDs, and so that later we can leverage that in terms of uh, let's say auto matching the rules uh, schedule and further to the costing related aspects. And yes, that's our. A commendable thing that uh, you just showcased that how the budgeted cost and actual cost the, those things uh, gave the differences like how the 4d and 5d BIM related things could transpire right and further for the teams that are looking forward to uh, implementing this uh, you can get started with the uh, our subscription models that are available for Synco 4D Virtuoso subscription that comes along with the customizable training and expert mentoring sessions, right? So all the technical and uh, IT related supports and all those things are included. So do visit the virtuosity.bentley.com or e-commerce store to check out the and further We have an offer that is. Guys, unfortunately, unfortunately, I have to drop. Sorry, unfortunately, yeah, okay. I have to drop yeah. because I have a meeting lined up after this. I'm really sorry. Uh, thanks, thanks yeah, to all of you to kind of organize this, uh, and uh, we'll catch up soon. Thanks, thanks Madhu, for joining. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, and for the Nevisworks team, uh, like uh, this could be a great offer that you can go upon. Right. Mm -hmm. And for the audiences. Uh, Thank you. Thank yeah. you for joining the session. Yeah. I hope for it was audience. informative and yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. And for the audiences who has questions, they can further yeah, reach out to Pratik or if you want to get in touch with Team Desapex or uh, Madhu, then you can either write back to us or we can or uh, connect to yeah, yeah, over LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. We will be happy to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Anish. Okay, thanks yeah, everyone thank for you. joining. Thanks yeah. everyone. Thanks for your patience. Have a nice day. And yeah, looking forward to more stories like this one. Yeah. Bye.
Goodbye.